obviously there's so many films here that I love. Um, but um, you know, I think as I was preparing for Carmen, I um, there's you know there's something that I studied in particular is um, you know the way that certain directors move the camera and stage the scenes, and um, I found myself thrilled to see to find um, directors who had really a sense of choreography that was really accomplished and really interesting. And you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about. A few of them. So one of them that um, was a great inspiration, I'll pick here, I'll pick um, On the Waterfront uh, by Elia Kazan. It was quite fascinating because Kazan um, was a, the theater director in New York and the first couple of movies he really was just shooting, um, shooting as if it was theater. The cameras were still, he sort of didn't know how to, you know, what the camera could do in terms of enhancing the action. And you see, as he evolves as he starts to make more movies, that there's a, an enormous change and how uh, he starts to master this relationship with camera and movement. And in films like East of Eden and On the Waterfront, and then you start to have these incredible films where um, the physicality of the actors is is you know in the relationship to a camera that's never you know never uh, self-conscious that's never they're just for virtuosity that's really you know these choices are always very very specific to each scene he actually if you read his biography he really recommended uh, directors to 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 go take dance to watch choreography um, he he really um, understood the importance of you know and, and uh, analyzing, you know, how to move people in time and space, and how the camera could uh, could 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 be an incredible partner in in that movement. So now I'll pick Tree of Life by Terence Malick, and so that's for, you know for different reasons. It has to do with with dance. You know, in dance, um, we always say, you know, you don't want to be. You know, you want to make dance look like you're 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 just coming up with it in the moment. I mean, the best example of that is Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire always looked like he was improvising, right? It's just like, yeah, you know, these 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 moments of grace, and you never know what's coming next. Coming, you know, and, and it just had this 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 is sort of what you want to achieve. Terry has a way to capture that magical moment, I think, better than you know anyone else, and he does it by. Just this continuous shooting. I've been on set. I had the opportunity to watch him work on set. You know, the camera keeps rolling and he sort of lets the actors walk in all kinds of directions and he's just you know it's it's him but it's also the camera operator who has a sensibility to the action and just has this this ability to to to, to catch these moments that are completely graceful and completely unexpected and, and catch you know take your breath away so of course when it comes to movement um it's really important to study Kurosawa because, you know, and I would start with the first film, which is Sanshiro Sugata, which is a martial art film. There's an incredible scene in this, of this film, which is this duel between um, the two, the, the, the lead actor. It's, it's a combat that takes place on a hill in moonlight uh, with just these the grass that's flying and it's just an incredible incredible scene but throughout you see how bodies roll and fight and fall from you know screen right to screen left and how there's such intelligent cutting and movement and yet he has the ability to take a camera and go from seamlessly with the handheld camera to 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 a, to a tight shot to a wide shot to again a, you know a tight shot and and it never it always has this like incredible like perfect connection to movement so interestingly, uh, a, a totally different approach um, to to movement here, uh, because obviously Fosse, choreographer director, um, isn't someone who um, really where the the movement isn't about how he moved the camera on on, on any scenes. Um, you know the dances are complex and they happen on stage, and he would essentially capture all these different angles. And the choreography for me happened in the edit editing room. You know, the editing of Fosse is what's absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's a rhythm, there's a, the choreography, he literally creates choreography with the editing. For that reason, it's, it's a really important director to watch that I also, also love. Obviously, Cabaret is a masterpiece, and so is all that jazz. I think it's also interesting to talk when you when you think of, of movement and also of, of the importance of stillness um, uh, to talk about Antonioni, which um, 
as a director that that I love for for the, the the tension, the mystery in his films, the things that are unsaid. I think what I admire here is actually how so often he decides to, um, you know, not move the camera and also not necessarily see the character from the front. Uh, but experience the character from over the shoulder, the back. If you're doing it to show that you can create a, a you know a, a moment of virtuosity, I think it's it's uh, you're missing the point. I think the idea is that how all these elements come together, really beautifully, and in a way you need to be immersed in the picture and the emotion, and not feel like the camera is moving. And and Antonio is a really great great director to watch because of these choices actually of not moving the camera. So. Last, um, I pick Crayon Squad C. I highly recommend it. The score is outstanding. I listen to it all the time. I still listen to it all the time. I, I just, you know, I think of, of Philip Glass a little bit as kind of a Beethoven, you know. He, he, there's something about Beethoven. He always knew how to choose the right next note. You know, these melodies are really, really simple, and yet he creates these very complex variations with them, but there's a there's a kind of evidence to, you know, what note comes after the next, and I feel like Glass has that quality, um, and and the you know these melodies uh, continue to give me like incredible incredible pleasure. So, Crayon Squatsy, I recommend. Thank you.